Entry Plaza, Ticket Center, Main Entrance, all designed to look like Africa. On the left hand side they got membership services, first aid, and restrooms. Yeah, a snake right here in the bathroom. That's kind of interesting. Alright, this is pricing. You also have an adventure pass that includes zip lining and some animal feeding. You got an express train and a carousel included with that price. To the left of the entrance and across from the ticket center, you got the rentals where you can rent wheelchairs and strollers. This is pricing. Just have electrical wheelchairs. Alright, just past the entrance, you got the Zawandi Market. So I'm gonna go in here and get my hat. Alright, I got my hat. Uh, I was trying to get a hat that says Nashville Zoo in Tennessee on it. Uh, it's got a little bit of pink on it, but hey, you know, that's fine. I don't mind a little bit of pink. Uh, pink's not just for girls. So anyway, I'm gonna start right here at the front because the entrance, once you get past the, uh, the ticket gate, is fantastically uh, themed. It's, it's, it's beautiful in here, so I'm gonna start showing you that. Just continuing the African theme and feel of the place. Alright, since it's the holiday season, they have a nighttime lighting called Zulamation. And these are some of the Akapi animals that they have that will be lit up. Just thought it's cool to see. All around the zoo, there's gonna be signage to get you pointed in the correct direction. You can imagine how awesome this looks, all lit up. The zoo is open till 4 p.m., at which time they will close and reopen at 5 p.m. for Zoomation. That's an additional ticketed price of $19. So basically 20 bucks. All right, this is the paper map that I got at the ticket center for the zoo. I am basically uh, about right here. There's a couple animals I'm going to show you on this side, and then we're going to follow the path, at which point you either go to the left or to the right. I'm more likely going to go to the left and follow everything around, following all the different paths, and eventually I'll work my way around the entire zoo to show you every animal that they have here. So I'm excited to get started. All right, so if you take this path directly past the entry point, we'll come to a couple birds. We've got some hyacinth macaw. And this whole area is beautiful. Plus the birds make it even nicer. See all their beautiful blue feathers. We got two more over here. All these awesome waterfalls. These birds have a really, really nice area to hang out. Alright, next up we're gonna see some white-faced whistling duck. We got a common shell duck and some Stanley Crane. The common shell ducks. They look so common. Pretty cute. And the Stanley Crane. These guys are jumping around, bowing to each other. Not sure what that's about. And they got the whistling duck. The white faced whistling duck, I'm sorry. Gotta say their name properly. This is the water where all the waterfalls end up. We're gonna see some white cheeked gibbon. 
Now look at these sign up above on the left hand side. Animals may be inside due to weather conditions. It's a bit chilly. The evening enclosure is open to them so they are free to go as they please in and out. So if I don't see an animal out when I come by, I always return later in the day to see if the animal is out of their enclosure. So looking around, I don't see them. So as this is right at the front, this would be an easy place to return. Directly past the white-faced gibbon is where the path split off. So I'm going to go to the left and eventually I'll be back around to this spot once I make my way all the way around the zoo. There are lots and lots of seating. So if you get tired, there's plenty of places to sit down and rest a bit. Alright, we've got some simming. Do you see one of them hanging out here, literally? Just hanging down. He's got lots of space to roam around, trees to hang on. All right, Plaza Simmings, get the Zufari Cafe, tasty provisions. All right, just the provisions that they have. We also have three different types of refillable drink bottles. All right, so I got the refillable bottle with the handle because it'll be easier to hold. This is $9 and free drink refills the entire day that I'm here. This basically pays for itself and two refills. Great value. All right, so showing you my paper map again so you know where I'm at. Okay, I'm right here at the food court. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the path to the left we're gonna see all this stuff over here. And eventually I'll be back at the same spot and then we'll continue on. So the path that I'm on is called Zoo Central. Like I said we're gonna head to the right. Right along here. We're gonna see some meerkats. See quite a few of them are out. Love the way they're just all popped up. You can see there's a part you can stick your head up to see the animals a little bit closer. But you got the little ones just all hanging out. They're always in the lookout. This is natural instinct when they're out in the wild looking for predators. But there are no predators here to get them. Man, when I first came over here on my camera, I startled them because they all ran. So I spooked them. Didn't mean to do that. Now that they know it's safe, they're all coming back out again. They got our little holes that they dig. What's up, buddy? I didn't mean to scare you guys. I'm so sorry. They're very skittish. All right, we got saddle build storks. All right, now there's a sign up that says the saddle build storks are inside building a nest, so they are not in their habitat. Hopefully, I'll be able to see them inside or possibly not. All right, they have an amphitheater and a wildworks animal show to the left. And everything else is to the right. There's, this is the amphitheater. All right, we're gonna go inside Unseen New World, Creatures of the Americas. Some of the animals we're gonna see in here. All right, we've got two different types of animal in this habitat. We've got black and white tegu. And a red-footed tortoise. The red footed tortoise. Now I've wiped my lens numerous times because of the temperature change. It's a bit warm in here. 
my lens keeps fogging up. Now we got poison arrow frog. All right, despite the little bit of reflection in the glass, because we're near a door, he's really nice looking, and he has a fantastic habitat here. Next up, we got a Puerto Rican crested toad. This guy's also got a fantastic habitat. So I was looking all over for him. He's actually right here. Right. Right in between the rocks. Very nice. We got, we got golden frog. Equally fantastic habitat. Because of their coloring, these things are very easy to spot. There are numerous ones in here. Like I said, very, very easy to see because of their coloring. Then we got South American Bushmaster. Plus, got, plus we have South American Green Racer. Right, Bushmaster right here. Close up the South American Bushmaster. The South American Green Racer is up high in the tree. Got a dying poison dart frog. These the poison dart frogs in here. Tropical toxins. Watch your head and your and your step. Got an eyelash viper. Got some fantastic coloring on this guy. Well, they're called eyelash vipers because above their eyes they got these little scales that stick out to resemble eyelashes. We got jumping pit viper. This guy here. Got a rhinoceros iguana. We got some aquariums here also. Some different aquatic life we'll see in this tank. I love the design of the different habitats. Some big fish in here. These guys have access to several of the tanks via the little cut through. Got a big old giant sucker fish there at the bottom. This is what they got in this tank. All sorts of stuff in here to look at. Alright, tropical rivers. The critters will have in here. Spot belly inside. Neck turtle. And several other types of fish. We've got a big old double sided. You can see the turtle. And then you got a horned frog. That's him right there. That's what we got inside here. Strawberry poison frog. This guy right here. We got unseen tropical pools. Right here we're going to see an emerald tree boa. All three of them coexist in this habitat. So an emerald tree boa. Dying poison dart frog. There's a dying poison dart frog. As well as by colored dart frogs. 
It's like an alert for this guy, and I finally found him. But even with his yellowish color, he was still hard to find. The Mexican leaf frog. This is their habitat. Several Mexican leaf frogs, very easy to see. Right, so this habitat, we got Central American rat snake. And another one behind the frogs. And then we found the Central American rat snake. And a Heliquin race runner. Alright, the Heliquin race runner is right between these branches in the back. Alright, we're going to have Hamanian golden frog. And this is their habitat. Alright, right here in the front on the bottom of the habitat, you got the Pamanian golden frog. He was very, very easy to see. And an elegant helmeted iguana. And we got the elegant helmeted iguana. You can see his helmet, so to speak. A green and black poison arrow frog. All right, along the bottom on the left-hand side, you got the green and black frog. You can see a green anaconda. This lush design of this habitat. Plenty of water for the green anaconda to be in, because that's where we see them. You see how huge this snake is. Massive, massive snake. And a red-tailed boa constrictor. All right, the boa constrictor is going to be hard to see because he's he's here on this little ledge, all curled up, taking a nap. But you can actually see his head, his eyeballs. Got yeah, short-tailed leaf-nosed bats. And lots of these guys flapping around and hanging from the top. They're getting some food. And they all squish in together. Very small bats. And they're great to have around your home because they eat insects. So during the hot weather months, these guys are very important to have to control mosquitoes and other nuisance insects. Are these darker terrariums got a couple different froggies in here a couple of my froggies right here we got rainbow boa there's our snake here on the bottom what we're going to find in this habitat sabana cerium toad a splendid leaf frog. This is right here. There's a lot of condensation on the glass. It's like the uh, Sabana Serenum toads right here on the leaf. I can't seem to find a splendid leaf frog. We got yellow blotted map turtle. This guy's down here swimming. Alright, I'm going to try to pronounce that one. Got Dragon Tito. Very lush habitat. That's the hard to pronounce guy here on the bottom. And our other guy is really, really hidden. So I cannot find him. These are the seldom seen critters. Got a red knee tarantula. He's right here at the bottom. A giant whip scorpion. Arizona blonde tarantula. Alright, so I saw the tarantula really quick. Down the bottom is the scorpion. Alright, just mix habits have we got a water snake and hellbender. Very, very nice habitat. There's the water snake. He's head right above the water. Another water snake out of the water. And 
Hellbender is right here on the bottom. The Blanchard Milk Snake. Got some nice striped coloration. And a Tiger Salamander. Some nice. Yeah, I can see why he's called a Tiger Salamander. He looks like a tiger. We got an Indigo Snake. Wow. That's a cool looking snake right there. We got an Alligator Snapping Turtle. There's the habitat for this guy. Got some fish friends in here too. Alright, I was looking around and didn't even see him until he moved. This thing is ginormous. They're huge. He was perfectly still. And I almost missed him. He looked like a rock. Alright, we got a copperhead. That's this guy right here. All right, we got Gila Monster. Gila Monsters are very easy to spot. Just kind of squished on the side there. And Baja Blue Rock Lizard. And our Baja Blue Rock Lizard is a Banded Rock Rattlesnake. Very aptly named. Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Very venomous, but beautiful looking snake. Alright, in this habitat we got Chuckwalla. The Desert Tortoise. Spiny-tailed Iguana. Finally, Beaded Lizard. All sorts of critters in here. Got one of the guys right up at the top, all by himself, looking down at everybody else. This is going to be North America. Interesting upside down jellyfish. Very interesting. Alright, inside this aquarium, the different fish and invertebrates you'll see. The color pops in here. It's a very, very invasive species. The new Pacific lionfish. And they are awesome to look at, but they're very destructive to natural habitats. It's something you don't want to have in your house a Trinidad giant or cockroach. Got yeah, what's known as palmetto bugs in Florida. And they are about this size or even bigger, and they fly. But these are a lot nicer looking than the palmetto bugs that I'm used to seeing. Got lined seahorse and dusky pipe fish. Got the seahorses at the bottom and up on the tree. I've looked quite a while for the pipe fish, and I'm just not seeing them. It's got to be blended in very, very well. Got lots of little seahorses. We got a rhinoceros iguana. Just relaxing. Wow, look at this fantastic tank. A couple of the fish we'll see in here. Others. The screens change because there's so many different types of animals in here. So I might not show every single one. It's fantastic. Alright, so I'm back outside. We're going to continue the path. Alright, right outside, Unseen New World. They got snake bites and tin barbecue depot, which neither one is open today. 
And it's the jungle loop. So no matter which direction you head, you'll still wrap around to the starting point. So we're just going to continue straight on here on the left side. There's this area I come up to. You can pet the animals. This is normally the habitat for the Galapagos tortoise, but because of the cold weather, they are off viewable habitat. But hey, the goats are out. You got several different species of goats. Look at that, and they're all lined up by size. That's really cool. I swear I didn't make them do this. They did this on their own. Smallest to largest in the back. Of course, the guy in the back is on stairs, so he's kind of cheating. We got some donkeys. What's up, donkey? I'm sure these poor guys get asked where Shrek is all the time, so... I'm not going to do that to them. Oh, we got some Juliana pig. Piggy's over here. Munching on some hay. Look at that. We got some blue-billed curassaw. Nice, some big birds. Fancy blue beaks on them. And a snowy owl. Looks like I've got two in here. Man, those are beautiful birds. That's a black-throated magpie jay. Ooh, look at that. Well, usually the animals fly away, but they came right up to the right up to the side. Hi, birdies! Wow, those are cool looking. Love the feathers on top of their head. That is really neat. And we have alpaca. Now, alpaca also resemble llamas. All right, so right outside they have wireless hand sanitizer. I used it because I was petting the animals. Alright, Flamingo Lagoon. Alright, so these are Caribbean Flamingos. These guys are very, very pink. The ones that I usually see have just a little bit of pink in them. So the food that these guys eat determines the how much coloration they're going to have. Very nice. They all got their numbered tags on their legs. And you can see on that bird, they have black tips to their wings. Unless they are stretching or flapping their wings, you would never even notice that. Alright, possibly going to see the bear's taper, but they do have crested screamer all around. I already see them. So the taper may be off habitat, but the crested screamers. You can see it right here. Or I do see the Baird's taper, although he is facing the opposite direction. This usually happens to me when I'm trying to film the animals. I get the rear end of them. Okay, so right past the flamingos, I'm going to take the bamboo trail, see the cougar, the spider monkey, and the bear. Very aptly named bamboo trail because of all the fantastic bamboo on both sides of the trail. Alright, clattered leopard. The yard. He's got two youngins with it. Even the little ones have those super long tails, though. Look at that. Here's the other one. Little, little cubs. And mommy. We got red panda. Wow, I got a great view of them. Yeah, they're usually going to be up in trees. 
Okay, the water here contains koi fish. Signs all around telling people not to throw money. All right, yellowback duker. Yes. Very nice. I just uh, foraging for some nibbles on the ground. All right, red ruffed lemur. All right. Look at them. Pretty red coloring. Hello. All right, so continuing along this path. Or is this the habitat for the cougar? It doesn't appear the cougar is out right now. So I'll try back before I leave. Alright, spider monkey treetop passage. Alright, so we've got spider monkeys and a rope bridge. I want to take the rope bridge and hopefully we'll be able to see the spider monkeys from that point too. Alright, let's do this! Ooh. See, luckily there is a floor weaved into this bridge. Oh, I'm still swaying back and forth. Woo! Oh, the more I walk, the more sways. Woo! Oh, my guy just. Ooh. Keep falling to the side. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, that was exhilarating. All right, Mexican spider monkeys. All right, it appears the spider monkeys are inside also. Again, I will try before I leave to see if I can see them. All right, so I did the bamboo trail to the left, and I came back to this point, going to see the Indian bear and Sumatran tiger to the right. Expedition Peru, trek of the Andean bear. All right, it's the Andean bear habitat. Oh, this is fantastic. I can see one of them up here in the tree. Once I move around, I can get a better view of them. So we got some construction going on. So it's good to see Zoo making renovations and additions. So we're gonna follow the trail right along here, trek of the Indian bear. Wow, oh, this area is amazing. Just the design of the spaces in this zoo are just superb. Is inside the building. And you can see uh, this is the male bear. And there's the female. You saw from the other vantage point. From inside, you see just how fantastic. Any of bears habitat is. I'm so impressed with this zoo. The female's name is Luca, about 150 pounds. And inside they have this fantastic mixed level aquarium. This is what you're gonna see inside. Blotch River Stingray. The yellow spotted Amazon turtle. And I was speaking to two of the workers inside there. Uh, this whole area was opened uh, two years ago. They have some other areas where the tiger is that opened last year. 
So they have a lot of stuff that is very new to this zoo. The entrance that I showed you when I first came in opened up a few years back. So they're doing a lot of renovating and making this zoo look fantastic and they are doing a great job so far. I love everything that I see. Good job, Nashville Zoo. Fantastic. We got a southern hoodoo. Oh, this thing is so cute. Just hanging around. Hey, baby. All right, Alligator Cove. You head right inside. All right. Let's see if you can find our alligator in here. Alright, he's underwater. Right in the center of the water. These guys can hold their breath, but typically you'll just see the head sticking out of the water. They just have their hind legs or even their tail on the bottom so they can have their snout out to breathe. Lots of signage around, give you information about the alligators. Don't mess with mama. The alligators hatch. Well, after hatching, the mother alligator often lets her young crawl into her mouth. Oh boy. Look at that. These alligators are an important part of their ecosystem and regarded as keystone species. A barometer of how well our wetlands are faring, whether creating nests, controlling prey species, or providing watering holes, alligators benefit for habitats as well as other species. So every time you hear about uh, so-called nuisance alligators, especially in my home state of Florida, being removed, that actually does harm to the ecosystem. All right, something to look forward to. Komodo Dragon coming next year. All right, right up the path. This opened up the year before. Let me go check out the tigers. It's called Tiger Crossroads. Yeah, tigers are a critically endangered species out in the wild. There's lots of information on the wall. Over the last 35 years, Sumatran tiger populations have fallen by 60%. This is due to habitat loss as well as poaching. Alright, Sumatran tiger. Right up against the glass. Got the sun shining. Laying in some nice comfortable straw. Or hay. Give itself a bath. Wow, these are beautiful animals. Just the importance of zoos. That these save species from extinction. So the Sumatran tiger's habitat is very, very lush. This is what a tiger looks like from the back. Watch his paws. Very long whiskers. It's a sad fact that human beings are the most destructive species on the planet. These tigers are disappearing due to poaching and habitat loss. And extinction is forever. Now they do have a kid train that follows a path. It's trackless, so it's on wheels, but it is Closed for maintenance. 
and it also might be for weather related all right, this is like the savanna for the type of animals they have through here so they have eland does have Badabak, you got Springbok, you got Zebra, Grey Crown Crane, and Ostrich. You got the ostrich just right there front and center. Not sure if it's sitting on an egg or not. You see the rest of our animals in the back. All the way towards the back, get some of the animals, another ostrich, just a female ostrich, a nice zebra, only thing I do not see in here is the crane, but it could just be further back. I just can't see them. We got a kangaroo kickabout. All right, kangaroo rules posted. No food or drink is permitted in the exhibit. Stay in the path. Let the animals come to you. If you're safety, please do not pet, chase, or feed kangaroos. Any animal may scratch, kick, or bite. All right, all the information on the red roo. That's Australian for red kangaroo. Guess like all nice and comfy. Laying in the sun. Get two more over here. And there's a difference between the male and the female of red kangaroos. All the kangaroos here are female. That's why they have more of a grayish color to them. Like they're just uh, just nibbling. Information on the on the young or little Joey. Got a spot right here for the kangaroos to come and hang out. This one's sitting in a little pile of of hay. Alright, so I spoke to one of the keepers. Since all the females are out here, these are not breeding kangaroos. They do have a male in the back that is not on exhibit because he's very shy around people. Plus he's got five lady kangaroos to keep happy. Alright, so if you are a lucky person that gets a chance to touch the kangaroos, they do have hand washing stations. And here for the little ones. Alright, now right across from the entrance to the kangaroos we got a double waddled cassowary. It's in the same subfamily as ostrich. However, this is the most dangerous species of that subfamily because they have a large talon-like foot in the center and they attack with it. It's information about the Cassowary. So you're at the bottom. The inner toe in each foot has a claw that can be up to five inches long. That's why they are the most dangerous birds. Very colorful to top of its head though. So continuing the loop, I end up right back here by snake bites in the unseen new world. Alright, so back at Zoo Central, gonna follow the path on the left from Zoo Fari Cafe. Right, more African themed. So there's two paths to take. They both end back in the same spot. So I'm going to go to the right this time. A little change of pace. 
All right, southern white rhinoceros. Got a whole herd of them. Now, incredibly sad fact about rhinos in general is they are often hunted by poachers and their horns removed even though their horns are made of the same protein that our hair and fingernails are made out of so there's no advantages no medicinal purposes at all to harvest the horns killing these magnificent animals for that yet it continues to happen in the wild very very sad but often zoos and protected sanctuaries are the only place that these magnificent animals are all right we got some red river hog get two of them laying here keeping each other warm what's up piggies path up ahead goes to the HCA healthcare veterinary center it's actually working veterinary center where they care for the animals In itself is a very nice building. This is right outside getting information. They do have breeding programs here. We're going to see a bitterong. This is the bitterong. This is just a baby. God, it is so cute. Very inquisitive. Look at this. Hi. Hi, baby. What you doing? Look at that, man. Loves the attention. Wow. Got more information on the wall out here. To get surgery centers. Today is just got preventative care. All right, so while there are no surgeries going on today, while it's going on, there is a seating area here where you can actually watch as they perform surgeries on the animals. Now, I apologize for the reflection, but I can't do anything about that. There's more equipment to use to treat the animals. All right, so now a good zoo is going to have veterinary staff on hand. A great zoo is going to have a facility like this to treat any illness or injury to animals here. All right, so I spoke earlier about conservation and how we as a species are the most destructive on the planet as far as how we take care of the planet and the animals that live on the planet with us. I come to different zoos because oftentimes a zoo is the last ditch effort to protect critically endangered species in the wild due to poaching and habitat loss. Now I've had some complaints from people thinking that zoos are nothing but captivity that keeps the animals from being out in the wild. Sometimes zoos are a necessary evil so to speak because it's the only way to keep a species from going into extinction. As you saw a sign earlier, extinction is forever. You can never bring an animal back. So that's important to think about why we have zoos. All right, well, I have to apologize. Being I've never been to the zoo and I wasn't paying attention to the map because it was in my pocket, when I first went in and I said both paths lead to the same spot, that's actually not true. Since I went to the right and I went up here, I came back this way but then I realized I might have missed something this way 
and actually I would have because the giraffes are here so I'm heading over to the giraffes now all right along this path that I almost missed you see more of the white rhinoceros's habitat now they have a good size habitat so they are somewhere that I can't really see them at the moment but we had a great look at them earlier all right we got some massy giraffe our Maasai. So our bull is Congo. This is Congo and right over there us. is a five-year-old calf that her name is Nasha. Wow. She's a little over five, so as soon as she starts cycling, uh, uh, Congo will have eyes for her, and then 15 months later, Willie might have a calf. All right. So it's pronounced Maasai. Maasai, like the tribe. Oh, okay. In, in, uh, oh, all in right. Africa. And this is the largest species of giraffe, so this is a pretty tall guy here. Congo is 17 feet, 4 inches tall. Wow. That's a big boy. He weighs 2,775 pounds. Wow. That's more than some cars. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> now, Nasha is just a, a petite uh, 13 and a half, almost 14 feet tall. She's uh, smaller uh, and lighter than uh, as a female than the males will be. Okay. Males are uh, always taller and darker. But Congo is an, uh, an exceptionally uh, dark giraffe. The keepers tell me that as a calf he was an exceptionally dark calf. Oh, okay. But as all giraffes get older they get darker. Gotcha. So it's mostly what, reticulated giraffes that are in the uh, majority of zoos? Mostly because there are smaller species, their numbers are not threatened, and it's easier to transport. Oh, okay, gotcha. See, Congo is uh, too big to move now. He's here forever. Gotcha. Uh, when Congo and our cow, Margarita, she just recently passed away, uh, they had eight calves. Wow. Three girls and two boys. And each one of them uh, was a healthy birth and uh, went off to another zoo to be part of their breeding program. Ah, okay, yeah. So, so we can make more Maasai giraffes. Absolutely, yeah. So that's what the breeding program is all about. Absolutely. Here at the, uh, the zoo, uh, AZA accredited zoos, Association of Zoos and Aquariums, uh, a breeding program is called an SSP, a Species Survival Plan. Gotcha. And in the name of conservation, when we get contacted, like the uh, Kansas uh, Zoological Park uh, took a look at the bloodline of our last bull calf, Mozzie, and said he would make a great addition to their herd. Our SSP manager agreed, and we said, come and get them. Not a penny was exchanged in the name of conservation. Wow, that's fantastic. Oh, it's up to the zoo that's getting the animal that has to do the transport. Gotcha. But we may need a giraffe or another animal from them someday. Gotcha. So it's a reciprocal program. Oh, that's, that's, good to, that's good to have then. It has to be though a AZA accredited zoo because there are guidelines on how to take care of the animals. I, I understand that, yeah, that's those types of zoos that I, uh, that I typically go to because I know that you're going to take care of the animals and help with conservation and, you know, the survival of the species. Absolutely. So that's, that's This awesome. is one of the biggest uh, giraffe uh, enclosures in the country. At one time we've had as many as uh, uh, three adults and, uh, and uh, a calf. Uh, running around, but now we're just down to two giraffes in our tower, and that's what a herd of giraffes is called. Oh, okay. A tower of giraffes. Wow. Right, Congo? Big, <laughs> tall, and handsome? <laughs> Gentleman was very, very knowledgeable. He is uh, one of the staff here at the zoo, in case you didn't realize that, with his knowledge. Now, he did tell me that they do not have elephants here at this zoo anymore. Basically because of new guidelines for elephants, they need uh, a certain amount of space and the habitat required 
is a lot larger than they wanted to have set aside because they have some brand new plans coming uh, their five-year plan he was saying where they're gonna be redoing the entire African Savannah adding a boat ride it sounds fantastic so I will 100% be back once that is complete this is in the future they haven't even broke ground on it yet but there is a reason why this particular zoo does not have elephants all right so Lure Key Landing is closed for the season because of the temperature which I 100% understand for the safety of the animals got their conservation carousel with different types of animals instead of horses all right this is Grasmere Historic Farm it's all about Grasmere Historic Farm land was donated in 1985 Very vintage carriages that would be pulled by horses. So they're plowing equipment. So this once was an actual working farm where they had crops. So because of the time of year, there really isn't much of a garden. You can imagine how beautiful this must have been during spring. So this zoo was in use as recently as 1985. Now I'm not entirely sure how much of this was what was actually used for the farm or since it became a zoo what stuff was added later about the cattle. See them right here. That goats and sheep. sheep. This goat's got a sweater on. Keep them nice and warm. See some more of the cattle. Got a donkey here wearing a nice warm blanket. It's either a miniature horse or it is a pony. It's also wearing a nice warm vest. All right, so I asked a couple of the people over here doing some maintenance work what was the original part of the homestead and what was new. Across the bridge, everything there is original. The barn here was not structurally sound, so it was rebuilt the exacting specification, so it's a complete reproduction of the barn that was here. So this was built in 97, as well as this portion over here. This was the original garden where they grew crops for personal use and as a way to make money. Again, because the time of year, winter, there are no crops. All right, because this homestead was around during a time of slavery, this is the cabins that were used for the slaves. This is not a recreation, this is the actual
cabin. There's another one right next door. The door is closed. But this is where the this is where they actually lived. You can see where we are in the actual pasture lands that made up the property that the zoo now sits on. Lots more information about how the farm worked. Says, what's a house without a kitchen? It was built in 1876. Mills were made in this kitchen into the 1960s. Often houses back before the 1900s had kitchens that were separate from the main house. That was to protect it from fire in case a fire started, it wouldn't burn down the entire house. This is an actual working kitchen. All right, got some construction going on here. Gourmet pizza and ice cream shop coming soon. Building this stuff as we speak. This will be opening up. I think someone said spring 2020. All right, Jungle Gym. Not sure if they're doing renovations or if it's closed for the season. But you can imagine all of the kids running around back in this area. Alright, so I've made a track around the entire zoo from one part to the other. This is the pathway that you can choose once you're past the entrance point. You can either go to the right, see the veterinary center, the historic home and farm, and Savannah Loop, or you can go to the left, which is what I did, and see all the animals on that side before working your way around. Either way you choose, you're going to end up back in this exact spot. Alright, since I made my initial walkthrough of the zoo, I'm going to take this time to go back to the enclosures of some of the animals that I didn't get to see. I always recommend when you go to a zoo to return to an enclosure or habitat if you didn't see the animal the first time because you never know you might get a good view the second time or even the third time you go back. So hopefully I'll be able to see a couple of different animals that I missed. It was only a few so I'm going to go check them out now. Hopefully. Alright, my nostrils hornbill is out. Alright. So it always pays to come back. Lovely colored beak. Alright, another reason to return. The cougars are out. Got the one here. And the other one is over here. There we go, move to the side, get a little better view of the other one. Now I'm not sure if they're both female or male or one of each. But they were inside all morning. So they decided to venture out. It's their choice. Their indoor Habitat is available to them with the cold temperatures. So it's their choice whether to venture out or not. So I'm glad they did. Alright. And I came back, even the spider monkeys are out now. Alright. Three for three. These are the only animals that were not out my first time around. So I'm glad I got to show you. This guy's a little shy. Wow, that's a quick one. That's a quick one. Having some munchies right there. Got them both in the back now. 
got two more over here on the other side. All right, so that was fantastic. I got to show you all of the animals that are actually on exhibit. There were just a few, such as uh, the tortoises and one of the cranes that are not available for viewing just because of the cold temperatures. Also the lorikeets at Lorikeet Landing uh, unavailable till springtime. They want to protect the animals, that's more important than people like myself looking at them. But anyway, had a fantastic day here at the Nashville Zoo. This is one of my favorite zoos that I've been to throughout the United States and I've been to a lot of them basically because of the look of the zoo their habitats none of the animals are in cages they are all open habitats for the animals I think that is fantastic the zoo is on an active renovation and expansion plan they have opened up new areas of the zoo the past three years. I spoke to you a little bit earlier near the giraffes about their plans for the future. And I will return at a later time once that comes to fruition and it is open to the public. It gives me incentive to come back, see the changes and updates. So thanks for coming with me today. I had a blast. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Please like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. That helps me know that you guys like what you're seeing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.